One way to determine if a matrix A is diagonalizable is to find the rank of lambda I minus A for each eigenvalue. This will allow us to easily determine the dimensions of the eigenspaces. From there, we can determine if there are sufficiently many eigenvectors to diagonalize the matrix. Let's see how this works, and I'll leave links in the description to relevant topics if you find yourself needing some review on eigenvalues and all that stuff. To find the eigenvalues, we find the determinant of lambda i minus a. Lambda i minus a looks like this. On the diagonal, we just have lambda minus the diagonal entries of a. And off the diagonal, we just have the negatives of the entries of A. We can find the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix using a cofactor expansion along column 2, and that gets us here. Expanding and simplifying this determinant, we end up getting this factored form. So this is the factored form of our characteristic polynomial, and by finding its roots, we get the eigenvalues, positive 3 and positive 5. Then we can find lambda i minus A for each lambda, and then we need to determine the ranks of those matrices. Here's 3i minus a, that's just this matrix but with the eigenvalue 3 in place of lambda, and here's 5i minus a, which is similar. Now, what are the ranks of these two matrices? Well, the rank of this first one we can easily determine by looking at the columns. This is a column of zeros, and these two columns are exactly the same. So the rank of this matrix is the number of linearly independent columns, which is just 1. We can determine the rank of this other matrix by looking at the rows. Row 1 and row 3 are not linearly independent, since row 3 is just negative 1 times row 1. But clearly, rows 1 and 2 are linearly independent. They are not scalar multiples of each other. So the rank of this matrix is 2. Now, how do we use that to determine if our matrix is diagonalizable or not? It comes down to the nullity of these two matrices, because really what we're trying to do is count the number of linearly independent eigenvectors. And the nullity of this matrix, for example, will be the dimension of the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 3. That tells us how many linearly independent eigenvectors there are. And from the rank, we can easily determine the nullity. This is a 3 by 3 matrix, and rank plus nullity must equal n. So if the rank is 1, the nullity must be 2. So 2 plus 1 is 3. On the other hand, this matrix is also 3 by 3, but its rank is 2, so its nullity must be 1. Rank plus nullity here must equal 3. This means the dimension of the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 3 is 2, so those are two linearly independent eigenvectors. The dimension of the eigenspace corresponding to 5 is 1, so that gives us one linearly independent eigenvector. In total, we have three linearly independent eigenvectors, which is exactly how many we need to diagonalize our 3x3 three three matrix. Hence, this is a diagonalizable matrix. And there's our conclusion. We have two eigenvectors for one eigenspace, one eigenvector for the other eigenspace, so in total, three linearly independent eigenvectors eigenvectors, hence the matrix is diagonalizable. So for an n by n matrix A, how do we use the rank of lambda i minus A to determine if A is diagonalizable? Well, just find the rank and use that to find the nullities, then add the nullities together. If the nullities equal n, then yeah, the matrix is diagonalizable. Otherwise, it is not. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.